You'll get after them. Yeah, they got an owl hooter right on them. For sure, wrist and bird. I think if we feel the wind out in the morning, like we have calm winds, we can get up here high, where we can hear a bunch. I think this is where we start. And then if we got a little bit more wind, we start on those lower elevation ditches that we can hop into quicker and call, you know, make a run of one quicker and drop down to the next one and just zigzag our way back through those trying to strike up birds. Mm -hmm. I think that's more of a windy day game. Yeah, and the, I think this too is more of a calm day game in the fact that you could hear one, two, three birds like that spread out, you know, a mile and a half. And then you can use this road to get to them. Yeah. Whereas in there, I don't know that you can get up to this point as quickly as you can, or, or from here to there as quickly as yeah. you can on this road. I think if we run this too, like this thing goes for, how, how long? Like probably three, doesn't it? At least. Yeah, so like if we... I mean, remember how long that valley was we drove? Mm -hmm. It's pretty much all that, but up here on this elevation. So I think we just run this way back in the morning and just get to a point where we can hear like three ditches if it's calm, and then we can just run from there. Mm. Pretty sweet. It's awesome up here. shot that turkey yesterday and it's looking like winter up here which is kind of what we expected but we were hoping to hear down into the bottom but there must just be enough terrain that we can't hear down in there so we're busting it back in here there's a couple finger ridges that have valleys with creeks in them that run down to the bigger bottom where the private land pastures are where we've been seeing birds and stuff so we think we just gotta target a lower elevation, which is kind of what we expected, but we'd rather start higher and then drop versus have to run up to Turkey. So just getting our hiking in for the day, it is pretty nice. It's a great day to grappling somewhere, I guarantee you. It's about on our level. Really? Yeah. He's, you'll hear him from here for sure. He's got what, like four times. I mean, he's, he's down over this. Just listen for a second. Oh, heck yeah, dude. <laughs> got him. Wait, we're gonna have to be careful here. Yeah, because this road wraps and comes back around this wall. And it's super open, super open. So we walked about maybe two miles out of this access road, and it just kind of slowly winds down the mountain. And there's a lot of just fingers dropping off here. And as they start to drop down, they flatten out. Up here in this bowl, there's three or four of them that come down, and our plan was to get past this bowl and drop down an elevation, try to hear something down in there. As we came around this corner, I was ahead of these guys. He's got one over in here. He might be maybe 100 feet below us and maybe 200 feet. I don't know. We'll have to tell when we get around the corner. It sounded like to me right in there. Yeah. There's that finger here. Road does that number. It comes back around that point. Yeah. He's got him where all those creeks are coming down.
perfect we're in a good position now. It's hard to get right in those crooked oak up there. Yeah, I think if we get right in there, but if we need to move in, we can just go right out of versus like it's moving this way. Stay on this laurel transition, kind of.
I don't really know what happened there. So I watched shot hit right around the turkey when Ben pulled the trigger, but then he took off flying and I couldn't tell if he was hit or not. He almost acted like he wasn't hit. And I'm watching the video back in the screen and it's like, you can, it may be a little high, he might've shot right over him. We're just standing here listening though. I moved down the road. Sometimes if you hit a turkey and you don't hit him hard, don't run off or fly off in this case. And they'll go down and they'll flop just listening for flopping, but I don't hear anything. Probably just a clean miss, but geez, that was wild. Go back and get Ben's opinion on the shot. It's a tough one. I just wanted to make sure we didn't wound the turkey or something, or make sure he didn't go down. I think we'll probably grid search the immediate area here. There's a lot of down trees and stuff he could have went under, but I think we would have heard him flop. Must have just missed him. I just shot high. Yeah. I mean, I's dead solid all the way coming in. I think. I think we should grid search down through yeah. here. Do our due diligence, but I'm sorry, guys. I don't want the, the heck happen. Hey, man, I just got the coolest footage. Oh, ever. Dude, I know. He gobbled in our, He gobbled like seconds before Ben shot. Yeah. I could see him as soon as he was in the air, but he was like right on the backside of that hill. When he, we knew he was moving left, and it was like something snapped, and you could just hear him walking. It sounded like he was coming fast for a second he, there. I mean, he came fast and the whole then, way. And then when he gobbled that second to last time, it was like, he's right there. Sorry, folks. <laughs> Sorry, Zach. I mean, I know you nailed that footage. That was, <laughs> I was watching it through my eyes, and it was sweet. <laughs> What's that Jim Riser track? Don't, don't miss like Ted. Don't miss like Ted. <laughs> I'm sorry, bud. Hey, that was awesome. Hey. Good hot drag. boys. So we did a little grid search here, dropped down and went probably what three, four hundred yards. Yeah. Out into the timber where we saw him fly towards. We stood on the road after the shot for. 10 minutes and listen down it's super calm today you would definitely hear something down in here we didn't hear anything so the consensus is after looking at the footage that i just straight up whiffed <laughs> so we're gonna go back up there kind of investigate i'm just hoping to take something away from it learning wise thinking that maybe my head just wasn't down on the gun enough and that i shot high uh, i'd like to go up there and just see what i shot because there's definitely some stuff flying <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll go from there all right, well, hey, let's go check it out. Yeah, Crap you. happens, boy. <laughs> this is just what I've collected up to this point. There's even more right here. Pine, I mean, we're talking. That's a lot of junk on the ground. That makes me feel really good. And I can see, if you look right here, Colin, you can see this is all busted here. This is all the stuff that's been shaved up. I mean, probably not even all of it. I'd say we're. I'd say we're good. Probably could have let him come a little farther. I mean, I could tell in this in the video when I first watched it. I was like, "Ooh, he hit a ton of junk." Yeah. When we were coming down this road and we knew that he was on the road or close to the road, the thing that goes through my mind is like, if we set up on the road, it's like what another hunter would do for one. And two, I don't think those hens are spending a ton of time on those roads. And one of the reasons I know that they're not spending a ton of time on those roads is there was no droppings on the whole road I didn't see any mm -hmm. you know he's gonna get to one of those bends where the road bends out on one of the secondary ridges and he's gonna get out that point and gobble back and forth and if you don't come to him he's not coming to you now when we work all the way in and we get up and above him and we get in the timber and act like hens scratching and we scratched so much on this one and like when we called that first time we called we got him fired up it was like 
call a lot and then pass that it's just basically scratch and like become, I think it comes down to being in the area where hen is likely to be I don't think those hens just stand on those roads and scratch very often it don't get me wrong you see sign and scratching sign on those roads all the time but where do you see more scratching sign up in the timber you pointed out when we came up here but this there's like this laurel transition where mm -hmm. there's He's moving through something that he can kind of slip through. And he can't see us. And that was the other thing that I wanted to do is like, wanted to get up here on the top and just hug on that little thicket right behind us. And a bird that gobbles like that at a high point comes up. He's a two-year-old bird that is likely killable. Now, those older birds later in the season will do that. But like right now, early in the season like this, that's what your two-year-olds are doing. As far as we know, that's the only bird. I mean, that was the only bird here. Uh -huh. All the other birds are down low. Yeah. I guess we gotta go try to find one of those. Yep, yeah, let's go find one. All right, guys, I gotta come clean with everybody. I can't grow facial hair worth a darn. As you can tell, it ain't looking good. This past November, I did find a solution with my good buddy Grant. We decided that we were gonna dye our mustaches. And if you wondered, if I was dyeing my mustache in November, I most definitely was, and it looked awesome. I think it's hilarious, and I think it looks cool, man. So we're gonna do a little just for men, turkey season style. I'll show you how we do this. How do you work this thing? What? So what do I? What am I putting on my face? I'm gonna get all this extra stuff out of the way. See, that's gonna end up happening when you get around the chin area, so Ben's got the backup water. <laughs> Just dive right back into it. Alright, alright, alright. You think that looks pretty good? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible! <laughs> it's just so weird because you can't see it because it's so blonde. But then when you put that dye on there, it really sets in. It looks good. All right, let's read the instructions here for the next steps of this. Brush in, no mess, no drip gel. Brush design evenly to, yeah, this is gonna be cake. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get the instructions out. Number one, wash face after application, not before. Oh, <laughs> not massage product with your hands. We're not gonna do that. Start application where hair is the grayest. Brush up and down gently. It ain't gray, but it's blonde. Waiting only five minutes or a bit less prevents color from going too dark. I feel like this stuff's super dangerous, so I only keep doing this at like a limited time because like there's no way these chemicals in here are good for you. So basically what we gotta do is we gotta get this tray out. And then we gotta mix these two together. So once you've got it mixed up, you're just gonna get it on your brush and just get it on there. gonna just sit and let that product really soak into the hair. How absolutely long <laughs> that one is in the tray. <laughs> well, you're supposed to be able to wash out. Oh, that is just straight up longer, <laughs> isn't it? Oh, it is bad. It'll take some time. I may have to actually like use the sink inside. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the side effects that you might <laughs> so, one <of> the <laughs> so one of the side effects you're gonna have when you're dyeing your mustache. <laughs> so what are the side effects? <laughs> Alright, so one of the side effects to dyeing your mustache is, is <laughs> you might get a little weird tar on your face, so you're gonna have to scrub. So what I'm using to scrub is this sponge, and I don't think it's gonna work. I think I'm just gonna have tar on my face for a couple days, so this is how it turned out. Awesome, bud. Might be the last time I do it. 